So, NC Crawler, yeah. thanks for coming to London. No, thanks for having us here, mate. Uh, well, since the Ricky Burns fight, yes. what, to get straight into things, what, are the, what would you say the, sort of, the, the options you're looking at for the next fight? Um, There's quite a few options. Sort of. Yeah, I, I think... I think there is a, but I'm not sure of a date or anything just yet. I, I, sorry, I think it's going to be March time, around March time that I'll fight. Um, who I'm not sure yet. Obviously, the Sarko rematch. This Luke Campbell's name comes up a lot, um, and then there's the Sarko some kind of eliminator or or. One of, like one of the world champions looks unlikely when you see Rob Beltran's gonna fight in February for that vacant WBO title at Terry, Terry Flanagan's um, just vacated to move up in weight. And then obviously there's Lara, Linares Garcia. I'm not sure what's happening with these two if he's gonna fight Garcia, I'm not sure what's going on there. No Linares has got a date. Yeah, so it literally just last night. Lenara is fighting yes. in January against Yes, 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 that's the one, yes. Um, and then there's obviously been talk about sort of Luke fighting all day after that, so I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure um, what yet. I mean, the plan the plan is to win another world title, that's what I want to do, so whether it be some kind of eliminator to get me, you know, right in the picture to fight for that world title is what. It's sort of what I'd like, um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who just yet. I've been ticking over. Stephen Smith has um, he's got a big fight with Francisco Vargas over in Las Vegas. So for the last month, really, ten days after my fight, I was in the gym and I've been sparring and stuff with Stephen. So yeah, I'm just um, I'm just ticking over really, um, enjoying. You know, it's just a lot more relaxed. I think when you're in the gym now, when you know there's not you're not working so hard for a specific game plan or the diet's a little bit more relaxed yeah. than that. Yeah, it's um, so that's all I've been doing really. How's Stephen been looking? At he's looking really well. Do you know what? I sparred with him yesterday and he was really well. He's as the week goes on, he's getting sharper and um, yeah, he's, he's in a good place. He's, uh, he's done a lot of sparring for this. He's done a lot of sparring for this fight and um, listen. You know Vargas, he's, he's been in his free fight of the year, like um, contenders on, well actual free fight of the year is not contenders, and um, in the last two, of, yeah in the last in the last three years, so he's, um, he's been in some, some amazing scraps and uh, hopefully they put a bit of miles on the clock for Stevenson, but I, I just no, I, I just genuinely believe that Stevens you know, a great chance of beating him. It's, it's a tough fight, and I think it's a real 50-55. I think Stevens got the shots to um, to cause Vargas a lot of trouble. I genuinely do. Um, like I say, you look like I just said then. The last three years, he's been um, he's been he's been involved in fights in the years. Um, so it just. I, I don't see how this can fail, you know, not not to be a good fight really. And I, like I say, I fancy, I fancy Stephen to win a hard fought fight and a, a real fun friendly fight. He hasn't had it easy, has he? He's not, he's not, you know, obviously Pedraza is a very good champion. Um, I know Davies beat him, he's um, you know, a super talent, but Pedraza a very, very good champion. Um, and again, Sosa, he's a number round for he had a great fight with Sosa and um, again there's no shame when he lost to Lomachenko. But yeah, he's, he's not had an easy whatsoever, he's not had much favours, so sort of done, done for him um, opponent wise. But I think that's how, that's how he likes it and I think wins, you know, if he gets the win against Vargas, which he's capable of, he puts him right back in the picture for a third, third world title shot, because this is almost like... It's a 10 rounder, but it's, it it's almost serves as an eliminator, you know what I mean, when you look at, you know, Var Vargas' resume and uh, stuff like that. So, we'll, um, we'll see, but yeah, obviously, really hopeful Stephen can do it. When it comes to you, you've seen Ricky Burns rematch as an option. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that fight had that unfinished business? Is it yeah, a, is a rematch as appealing to you as an eliminator? I, or no, I mean, not in the sense that. Listen, it was, it was, that, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a hard fight, hard fought fight, but there was no doubt in that there was enough to win. So it wasn't controversial in any way. So I don't really know in that sense. Uh, I mean, whenever I get in the ring, 
I don't think really getting the ring if I was motivated. So, uh, but in that sense, no, I was, I was, I definitely, when I say it was, you know, it was hard, hard fought when it was, you know, it was close enough, but was, there was no doubt in I won. I won by, you know, by a good few rounds. So, that's I'm not sure, I'm not sure in that sense really. So I love sort of what, what's next, what's on next, what gets me in a better position to fight for a world title. Yeah, because it wasn't, it wasn't a boring fight. I remember you saying immediately afterwards that you were worried it was boring. Yeah, yeah, I was worried really on it. Yeah, I know. I felt like I say it was okay, like, I didn't really want an out and out war or anything like yeah. that. It was, it was a decent fight with me and uh, Ricky and, and I fought like early on when I said I fought. When I come away from the plan a little bit, whether I was, I was worried maybe was it boring or not, I don't know. Um, but I always think that in the fights, I never know. I've been involved in, you know, I'd like to think I've been involved in some good fights and I always worry, you know, what it was like. Um, that the fans sort of are entertaining enough. But, um, yeah, I'll say, I don't, do you know what I mean? I don't know with, with that fight, like say, if there's, if there's any sort of demand for it anyway, do you know? But uh, we'll see, we'll see. I like to say my, my aim is to be a world champion again and whichever fight gets me in the position to fight for a world title is a fight I'd be happy to take. So with like Ray Belcher, he's obviously a fighter you know well. Do yeah, you yeah, I know Ray, yeah. Do you, you think it's more likely that he'll fight someone for the vacant WBO and yes. then you'll fight him after that if that fight happens? Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if me and Ray was forever happy, me and Ray Belcher was forever happy. Uh, but it'd have to be that, yeah, because he's already got a fight sorted for he's February. He's definitely fighting February, I don't yes, know. Yes, yes. So you yes. Try, you could just jump in and fight it's, the same. Uh, I mean, looking at the ratings, maybe it might be Carlos Smalls or, you know, someone else high in the WBO rankings. I mean, it's a fight I'd, I'd be open to. I've got a lot of respect for Ray Beltran. Um, but it's that. And then, like say, you look, obviously, the man wouldn't be there for a third of a fight with, with Linares, really. I mean, I'd happily get in with Yogi again, but, you know, I'm realistic in the sense that last time out, he beat me, he beat me well. Um, but I'd, I'd happily get back in with him, but obviously I'd have to get, I'd have to bring something to the table. Um, and then you look at the other champions, I don't know if Garcia's going to move up or what, and then there's Robert Easter, who's, you know, who's a great fighter. So whoever out the champions, Whichever opportunity pops up, I'd be happy to take. I'd be really happy to take. Um, I don't know what's going on with Robert Easter, but it certainly seems quiet. I'm not sure yet, but I don't know. You hear him and Garcia. You hear him, that him and Garcia was going to be made, and then it seems to have gone quiet again, like you say, and then you hear talk of Garcia moving up. So I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure in that, in that sense. Um, but even one of the champions, I'd, I'd love a crack at. Uh, like I said, because of the, the timing of things, I don't think that it would be. I don't, I don't know whether it could be possible for next time. I'm not sure, uh, but I'd be happy to review either one of them. Do you think if fighting March is next for you? Do you think there's an option to fight over in America? I know there'll be some, some uh, match, almost match. Yeah, there'll be some matches. I know. Yeah, there's a match. Into it. I don't think that's still the very end of April. And if that's the case, then um, it's probably a little bit long to fight from October all the way till you know the end of April. I mean, like I say, I'm ticking over. I could be ready. I could be ready sooner if, if given the end. So, so uh, but yeah, no. Summit fighting overseas or in the states is something I'd definitely be keen on. Um, You've already fought in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I've already fought in Las Vegas. She was. She was. It's early on. <laughs> early on in the card. So hopefully this time it'd be. Uh, much, you know, it'd be higher up in the card for sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm such a good crowd in Manchester. It must be hard. Yes, of course I say that. When you people fight say in that. Hard to walk away from it's hard to you. You know, the, the crowds are always great for me in Manchester. So people say, oh, would you love to fight? You know, fight against the Vegas or fight in New York?" And you know, it'd be nice. It'd be nice, but would it? Would it be Manchester? Be I don't. I don't think it would be. But I mean, it's something that I'm certainly obviously open to. So, yeah, if, you know. If, if the opportunity come up, I wouldn't be wanting to turn it down. And what did you think of Luke Campbell's fight with Ray Lenard? Yeah. Like, how, did, how close did you see it? I, the decision was fair? Without a doubt, yeah. I thought, listen, I, I'll be honest, I, um, I rate Luke as a boxer as a fighter, and I thought after that really bad start, I thought that Luke um, boxed lovely in between rounds was it seven and ten something and ten but I, I did not see it nearly as close as what 
one of the commentators had. Um, I, listen, I thought one to six. I thought Yorgi won most, at least five of the rounds, and he had the knockdown. And I thought Yorgi won the last two rounds when it was closing. You know, when Luke was closing, they got fought. So I thought there was no doubt who the winner was. Uh, that was my opinion. But Luke, Luke showed that he belonged at that level for sure. Uh, but yeah, as for me, there's no, there's no doubt in Lanaris won the fight. I don't think there was anything. Listen, I don't think there was anything controversial about it whatsoever. Um, but, Would you like to see them rematch? Um, it'd, be, it'd be interesting because Luke. Obviously, it'd be interesting in the sense that Luke got off to a very bad start last time. He got off to a very bad start, so would um, would see would see if he couldn't if he couldn't and he could box how he did for sound seven to ten. Then it could obviously it'd be a very different fight. It'd be a very different fight, and we'll see. I know, like I say, Yogi is fighting at the end of January. Um, just talk a little bit, so I'm able on me that Luke might fight Yogi. So, well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing. So, yeah, I'd listen. I think both two fantastic fighters. I'm, I'm a boxing fan. I'd always welcome that kind of fight. Do you think the ideal? Do you think the ideal thing for Anthony Crawler? Be for Luke to get the rematch, get the win, and then if you are going to fight Luke Campbell, then that's a massive fight. Yeah, because obviously the world title, I think me and Luke would be a fantastic fight. Like I said earlier, Yogi, I've got massive respect for, and but you know, the the, the demand won't be there for for a fight. So obviously, if Luke become world champion, being a a domestic, you know, big British showdown, um, and I think stylistic, me and Luke would gel really nicely to put on a great fight um, and yeah I'd, I'd, yeah, that would be the pain with a world title on the line I know Eddie Ernst said you know with both his lads and it, it'd be keen to put it on for, you know, for a world title on the line of course um, so yeah that you know that would be if Luke goes, and win a, goes, goes on and wins a world title um, it would it'd sort of be, it'd be the ice on the cake and the sense that it'd be, it'd be perfect for us both yeah. Do you think it's with the three of you? It's almost like your styles, and you know, maybe Luke's is better for Linares, but yeah, then your I, style could still. Yeah, could styles. Be listen, we all know styles make fights. Uh, with obviously with with Luke, Yorgi fought Luke very differently. So we fought me. I would have loved Yorgi to be coming at me. Um, you know the way he did with Luke but then that's what makes him good because he can adapt he can adapt well um, because he knows that would have been a lot more suited to me so he, he's shown that he had more than a plan, you know, plan A and plan B so uh, he could carry out both whereas with, with me he got on his toes he moved he punched and punches and moved fast used angles which would have probably that probably would have suited Luke more and that's how it is Styles make fights Styles make fights and um uh, but I, like I say, I believe, obviously with Luke, I think mine and his styles would gel to be a nice fight. And we're also here to talk about your book, yes. Million Dollar Crawler, which is yeah. out in all good bookstores. Yeah. So, why write your life story No, nah, it's not, it's not a life story. It's not a life story. Uh, Dom, Dom McGuinness, who, who I think has done a great job, hopefully <laughs> everyone else does. Um, it's sort of just been sort of the last five years. Obviously, there's been a lot of events in a, in my career and in my life. And, and the the idea was put forward to me, you know, about doing a book. I was just, yeah, yeah, you know. I, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, how far it would go. And then obviously, yeah, it's turned into the book, and it's it's doing really well, which I'm, I'm very proud of and thankful of. Um, also. So yeah, that's it. But a lot of people say, "Oh no, it's very good." Like, presuming it's the end now. There's, there's still a few yeah, more chapters. Yeah, honestly, I'm. Uh, listen, I mean, I'm in under no sort of illusions. I am in sort of probably the, the final sort of handful fights in my career. But I don't. It's it's one of them. This certainly, this certainly at the end of end of my career. I mean, it's not it's not an autobiography in any way. <laughs> it's uh, it's just some of the last five years fights, events that have happened and stuff like that. So when does the book start? It doesn't start like, It starts it actually start. starts at the Kieran Farrell fight. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which a lot of people Obviously don't know too much about. Time, really. Yeah, with, without a doubt, the darkest moment of career and probably in the life as well. Do you know what I mean, Jack? It's, uh, so it starts there. It starts there, and I'm just. Not a lot of people sort of know 
leading on to that fact, uh, what happened sort of that night. Obviously, boxing fans do, but there was, uh, and it, I think we put on a great little fight, uh, but it was non televised, and so a lot of people didn't really get to see it. And, yeah, it was it was a very big moment in my career. Yeah. It was also like because that was in the bowlers arena, wasn't Bowlers, it? yeah. Which I disrespect. Yeah, it's, it's a million miles arena, away. Not it? like yeah. it's only up the road in that sense, like. But yeah, it's uh, it is, and I think in that I sort of see how there's a job waiting for me Monday morning if it went wrong that night for me. If I didn't pick up a win that night, there's a job waiting for me in the office on Monday morning. So it's from that. So then, yeah, so to go from that to then obviously four or five years later in world title fights at the arena, it's, uh, it's a funny old game. <laughs> I mean, seeing what happened to Kieran and having such a serious injury, are that, like, has that changed, how, did that change how you look at boxing? Yeah, you yeah, definitely. Now? It's uh, with Kieran. And, I think, I know, I remember Joe, he was saying, like, say to me after it, like, I think he says, you lost a bit of venom. You know, in there, and obviously I didn't realise at the time, but when I think back, yeah, I probably did. And um, I remember at the time it made me think, you know, do I want to be boxing and stuff like that? Although I've always loved the sport, um, it, you know, it just makes you, makes you evaluate things, it makes you appreciate things as well, and um, it makes you also understand the dangers of the sport. What? How did you get the venom back? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like to say I didn't know I'd lost it. But then when I think back, I, pr I probably did. But then Johnny was just sort of just took me a bit to get over, which was understandable because of sort of how severe sort of the fight was, you know, caring the injuries that caring got, and it's probably bound to have an effect on me mentally a little bit. You've got a lot to deal with physically because you scared off burglars from your neighbour's house and got very badly hurt yourself. Yeah, it's with that. It was just ah, listen with that. It was just I say wrong place, wrong time. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, everything happens for a reason. And uh, with it, with with that incident, obviously it's talked about a little bit in the book. But that made me. I've always been a hard, hard trainer in that, but after that I, I knew that I was lucky enough to get a second chance and I had to, I made sure everything that I'd done. I, like I said, I've always been an hard trainer, so I know what I say, I'd make sure I put in even more effort. But it makes you evaluate me. I've come very close to losing my career, do you know what I mean, that night. And it, without boxing, I don't know what I would have done. So, yeah. Wait, what would you have done if you hadn't been fighting? I don't know, John. Honestly, you know what? I, at the time as well, John, I just I not long moved into an house with me, uh, with my partner and our little boy. And uh, it was like, you know, you're just thinking you've got bills to pay, and obviously I wouldn't have. I don't know how I would have paid those bills, so it's a big pride thing for me. I thought last thing what we're doing is moving in with partner's parents. And, you know, you feel like you're sort of failing as a man in that sense, even though it's not because there's, there's a lot of circumstances that affect people, but it was, it was a pride thing. And like with it, I don't, I honestly don't know. I'd like to think I would have found a way, but I don't know. I don't know boxing. It's, I'd like to think I'm, you know, I could, I could turn me on to a lot of things, but I certainly, I ain't got a trade or anything like that. Um, hopefully, I would have found a way, but I don't know. Since then, you was a massive world title fight in Manchester. You won big fights with the Naris, but you still feel the biggest fights of your career are still to come. I genuinely still believe I'm still improving. I'm a uh, you know, I've just turned 31. I've lived, I've lived sort of well. I'm always in the gym trying to learn. Like say, 10 days after my last fight, I was in the gym sparring. I was learning. I am not even just all the time sparring, but I look after myself, looking after myself, staying after it. And if I didn't believe that, if I didn't believe I could win another world title, I wouldn't be in boxing. Um, I've got it out of boxing, I've got everything out of boxing I've ever wanted. I wanted two things out of boxing when I come into it, when I turned professional. One was to win a world title, which is a lot of fighters, you know, the ultimate dream. And the other, the other thing was to 
get an house paid off and I've done that and I've watched how you know I watched for years that my mum and dad you know my dad's a post my mum works in a supermarket uh, it might not be the highest paid jobs but I've watched them grab for 30 years to pay an house off and I always thought if I can get a house out of boxing life's just a little bit easier and um, you know I've been very fortunate enough so when I say fortunate enough I've worked hard for that but I'm in that position where I've done that and you know a little extra as well so it's I'm not I'm not in it to try and you know yeah it's great I want to make life a bit easier for my family but the ultimate aim is to try and get them a world title. Did you avenge your loss to Yusuf Al-Hanina? Yes I did yes I did I did I did mate I did I uh, I was going it's funny now I come up back at him and my mates have a crap with me all the time we laugh about it and I remember after that night I went from a lad, and I understand most people's opinion, I went from a lad who oh, I was a big prospect, so he's not going to do nothing. Well, I said it, I shouldn't have been in the ring that night, but that's no excuses, but I should have, it was just an absolute nightmare. I was on, I was with ITV4 at the time, you know, terrestrial television, that was like, you know, you your first time on television. And I went and got beat off Yusuf, no disrespect, he was a part-time ice cream man, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, listen to well, it would, um, uh, someone put it a bit like, how many world champions have, have beat, been produced at the do you know what I mean? But don't get me wrong, he was a lot more capable than his record <laughs> suggests, but that, but that fight took me the biggest, it was the biggest, it was a big blessing in disguise, you know. Because you learn who's there for the long run and who's not, and, a lot of people have turned the back on me after that fight. It's, listen, you learn, you learn who your friends are, who's not. Who's that? Listen, there's people who's coming to watch me before that fight. Who stopped coming to watch me, and they're now coming to watch me again. And listen, I don't, I don't take it personal. It's just how it is. Um, and listen, if I, if I would have seen me that night, I always remember it at the time. I don't, really, I don't go on forums or anything. But I remember at the time, someone slaughtered me. You know, after the fight, people talk talking about he'll do this and that, he, he might win an area title at best if he, with a lot of improvement and it's like it's nice it gives me satisfaction you know it makes me very satisfied think, well, I've, I've surpassed winning that area title a little bit now <laughs> uh, did you doubt yourself back no, then? honestly John, I never doubted myself because I knew I was capable of it but something just wasn't clicking and it just took a little bit longer and I believe people mature at different times I was late at maturing and um, and that, that's it really mate. yeah that's that's it I never doubted myself but don't get me wrong I did think it's, gonna, it's a long hard I'd roll and like in my head like back at the time when I'd lost a few fights and I'm, if I would have said to people yeah you know I, you know, I think I'm going to be world champion probably laugh their heads off at me and, and they'd have a right to as well do you know what I mean but I, I always believed I could get to a high level even when even when like you say after, after all that I always believed that after those losses and that I always believed I could I could get to the top sort of thing somehow I'm probably mad for thinking it but still, yeah, I still believe the club. But you did? Yeah, and it did, and it makes it all the more satisfying. Well, that's not good to me. Thank you very much. Nah, John, thank you, mate.